This is AutoLine Daily, a show dedicated to enthusiasts of the automotive industry. And one thing's for sure, the automotive industry, the global automotive industry, is really on the front lines for making medical equipment to fight the coronavirus. Mercedes-Benz announced that it's offering up its 3D printing machines to start making components for medical devices. It's in contact with the state government of Baden-Württemberg in Germany, which is where Mercedes is located, to start making these devices. Over in Britain, a consortium of automakers, aerospace companies, and seven Formula One teams are banding together to boost production of ventilators. And then Mercedes-Benz's Formula One team, working with the University College of London and a hospital, developed a new type of breathing mask, and they did this in less than 100 hours. It helps coronavirus patients with lung damage to breathe better. And this mask is far less intrusive than ventilators, which have tubes that go through the skin or the mouth. You know, several weeks ago, General Motors really started working on how to make masks, ventilators, and respirators. It did this voluntarily, without any government contracts or input from the government. In fact, GM reached out to its entire supply base to quickly ramp up production of ventilators. And yet, on Friday, President Trump lashed out at GM on Twitter and criticized CEO Mary Barra by name, saying that dealing with Barra always seems to be a mess. He said that GM was wasting time, accused it of price gouging, and declared he was ordering GM to start making ventilators. Well, the people at General Motors were blindsided and stunned by these statements. The executive who's in charge of Project V at GM posted on Facebook that he and his team had been working 14 to 18 hours a day and that he left the GM Tech Center last Friday night near midnight only to hear a report on the radio of the president attacking GM. His advice is to ignore the president's tweets because they aren't true. Well, obviously, someone got through to the president. Yesterday, he said that General Motors is doing a fantastic job. I'm glad he changed his mind, but to me, this doesn't go far enough. Mr. President, you owe a public apology to Mary Barra and the people at General Motors. We've got new information on the Hyundai G80 sedan. We've already highlighted its instantly recognizable design, which we're going to link to. The interior is dominated by a 14.5-inch center display, which is flanked by a 12.3-inch instrument cluster. Genesis said it intentionally kept buttons and switches to a minimum. There are controls for the HVAC system and rotary knobs for the gear shifter and infotainment controls, which also has touch and write functions. Rear headroom and legroom were improved by lowering the seats. That also allowed for a more dramatic roof line. Another reason for more room is its all new rear drive platform, which is 275 pounds lighter. That's about 125 kilograms. Three powertrains will be available depending on the market where the car is sold. The first is a 2.2 liter four cylinder diesel that makes a little over 200 horsepower. Then there's a 2.5 liter gasoline four-cylinder that makes 300 horsepower. And then there's a 375 horsepower, 3.5 liter turbocharged V6. The G80 is offered in both rear and all-wheel drive. It also offers a number of driver assistance features and a whole host of luxury items. The G80 is supposed to go on sale in South Korea today and it's scheduled to roll out to other markets in the second half of the year. Well, auto shows aren't the only thing that are getting canceled, so are motorcycle shows. And that's why Honda just revealed this concept motorcycle online. They're calling it the CBF. It's an evolution of Honda's flagship CB series, which has been around for six decades. The CBF features a 1,000cc four-cylinder engine, steel backbone, and a single side rear configuration. And one thing we love is its simple design. And BMW 
turns out, is not giving up on fuel cells, although it's working with Toyota to develop them. BMW's next effort is a fuel cell concept based on the X5. It's calling the iHydrogen Next. The total system output is 374 horsepower. BMW believes that fuel cells have a lot of long-term potential, but it doesn't plan to offer one to customers for some time, nothing in the first half of this decade. It says we need more hydrogen stations, and hydrogen needs to be produced more cheaply. BMW says in the near term, the technology is best suited for long-distance, heavy-duty transport. And hey, be sure to join us for AutoLine After Hours this Thursday. We're going to have one of the smartest skeptics of Tesla's business model on the show. He's a financial expert who writes on the website Seeking Alpha under the handle Montana Skeptic. I guarantee you he's going to open your eyes about how Tesla reports how it's making money or not. So join me and Gary Vasilash for some of the best insights into the automotive industry. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. The supplier Borg Warner recently opened a tech center in Indiana. It's now able to build and test prototypes and make electric motors and power electronics all under one roof. I interviewed Dave Fulton, the director of electric drive innovation at Borg Warner, and he explained the benefits of having all these things under one roof. By its nature, uh, engineering design work needs some feedback. Uh, it needs to be able to confirm the things that we thought we could do uh, when we were doing it in simulation, in CAD models, things like that. Not, it's not as uh, um, hard to do a predictable job when you're uh, doing something you've done many times before, but if you're trying to push the envelope and do uh, new things about how we design motors for better efficiency, for better performance, uh, for lower noise. Those are some things that we uh, we need feedback on early on in the process so we can make uh, fine-tuning adjustments in the design process. We also are uh, finding new ways to build motors, to manufacture them, and this gives us new degrees of freedom, things we couldn't change before that now we can. And we're doing this type of development all under the same roof. So these engineers and, and people running the tests and making the prototypes all are seeing the same things at the same time, same parts, uh, hearing the same noises if you're uh, trying to evaluate where, whether you're gaining ground in that area. And, and to be able to have those conversations all together um, really expedites the process and it, it uh, makes our communication very clear and concise. Over the weekend, we got the word that the North American International Auto Show in Detroit is being postponed. And it's not being moved to later in this year, it's being moved till next year. But the show organizers didn't have a choice. The TCF Convention Center, where the auto show is being held, is being turned into a massive field hospital. We posted about this on Facebook and got a couple of conflicting comments. F.J. Bohannon says, if this cure takes much longer, it will hurt and kill more people than the virus. But Dave Foley had a different take. This cure is worse than the virus stuff is nonsense. If you're dead, you don't buy stuff. You know, both of them have good points. We need to stop this virus, but we're also in danger of plunging into the next Great Depression. Here's my two cents. We're in a war, people. The coronavirus is the enemy, and we need to go on a complete wartime footing to kill the enemy. I'd like to get your viewpoints on what you think we should be doing and keep it clean, and keep it sensible. And with that, we wrap up today's show. 